So in the previous video, we managed to create here our graph and the repository and connect everything together. So in this video, we're going to create our UI layer and basically hook up everything. So for now, let's navigate here inside our UI and create new packages. So for example, here we're going to create a package for home. So we can just call this home and also a package for detail. So we're going to have basically two screens and the detail and home. And here we have to rename this because we have to use a, a small capital later here instead of. Now inside here our home we can easily create now our coding class or file. And basically now let's create here our class and call this home view model. And this is going to directly inherit from the view model. And here basically we can pass in the repository. So let's create here a private variable and call this repository. And we can easily initialize this by using our graph. Okay, now let's create here our data class, which is going to help us to store our state. So let's create here a data class. And basically we are just going to call this home state. And this data class here is going to hold up the items. So for example, here we're going to have the items. And this is going to be a list of items. Items with the store and list. And basically we can just initialize this to an empty list. Okay, now let's create here another variable for category. You can just call this category. And basically we want to use this shopping here. And we can easily initialize this to an empty category. Okay, another thing here we want to check if the item is going to be checked or not. So we can just call this item checked. And by default we can just make this to be false here. Okay, now let's create here our state. So we can easily create here a variable and call this for example state and we can use here a mutable state list of and basically here we want to pass in our home state which is just going to be an empty home state and we have to import here some values and we want to make this private set so that we can not initialize or change the state outside of our view model we want to create here a function that is going to help us to get the items first before we initialize here our, our, our view model. So let's create here our private function. So this one is going to communicate with the view model and get the items. So let's call here our view model scope first. And we want to call here our repository. So this is going to return a flow here and we want to collect this inside our view model. That's why we have used a view model scope because we want to use the suspend function here and the suspect function, which is just the collect. So we can just call here our collect latest. And this one is going to fetch the last test items and then it's going to return to us. And for this case here, now we can just initialize our state and call state.copy. And now we can change here our items and change it back to it. So basically here we are just sending here our get items with the list and this is going to return a flow and we call here collect a latest which is just a suspend function as you can see here. That's why we are using here a view model scope dot launch and then we are going to collect the state and also save it inside here our state variable. And for this case we can easily update our state. So we want to get this whenever we initialize our variable or whenever we initialize our view model. So we can easily call here our init function and call get items. So whenever this view model is going to be created, we want to get the list of the items and stores which are available inside our database. Okay, so other functions here are for example, whenever we want to delete an item, so we can just create here a function which is going to help us to delete items. And basically now we can just easily call our view model scope again. And we can just call here our repository to delete item. And then we can pass in here our item. And basically we can easily delete our items. Okay, so we want also whenever we are going to have inside our view, we are going to be filtering data according to a category. 
but we can create here a function that is going to help us to change the state of the categories which is going to be selected and for this case we can just create here the on category change and here we're going to receive a category which is going to help us to change the state so we can just change here our state and this one is going to be equal to the category which we are going to create so we want also to execute a filtering function so we can easily create here a filter by id for example a function now let's create here another function private fun okay so now let's write here an if uh, an if a statement so for example when we want to filter by id then we're going to use a shopping list id and when not again we can just easily get the items so we can check here if we want to filter the shopping list id so if this shopping list id is not going to be to a random number which we're going to assign here so for example we have this random number here which is going to help us we know that we are inside a filtering function so let's call here our view model and we want to call here our repository and we're going to filter this according to the id by using this method here and now we can just pass in here our shopping list and we can just easily call here our collect latest and we can change our state and basically we can change here our items to be equal to the items which is going to be filtered so otherwise if we have not passed the shopping list to be equal to this one then we can easily just get the uh, all of the items so we are filtering without anything so else here we can just pass in our else function now we just call here our get items to return that items without filtering with anything so here as you can see we are going to be filtering according to the id then we change our state here back to these filtered items otherwise whenever we don't want to filter our database according to the id so we filter this uh, to none then we are going to call this get items here instead of just filtering this that's why we have created here a function which is just going to be the get items here okay so whenever we do this so when we change here our categories then we want to call here for example filter by and basically pass in here the id which we are going to be changing and now we can just select here our category dot id for example and basically here we are going just to change our our, our our items according to the category id so this was the method which is going to be called when we select a chip and change our our database and filtering them so whenever we change for example an item is going to be selected so for example a tick mark is going to be selected then we have to create another function which is going to update the state so we can just call here on item checked and and basically here we're going to receive the item and also is checked so we have to receive a boolean function here a boolean variable so inside here the method we want to change our database so that this item is going to be updated so we can call here view modoscope.launch again this is just a suspend function so for this case here now we can just call here our repository and we want to update the item right now so we don't want to 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 change the entire item so we can use an item update function here so we can just call here our item and then it's going to be item.copy and now we want to change this item here and we can check is checked and basically pass in the variable which is going to be passed here so if it's going to be true or false then we are going to reflect it inside here and for this case we have easily updated our database so this is going to be all of what we're going to be using inside our home view model so feel free to examine this or to expand the application to include other things which you want so for our case here this is just enough for our application so we have delete here function and also here we have updated our item so our view model here is ready now we can easily navigate here inside our home and create a new package and basically we are just going to call this home which is just going to be our home screen 
Okay, now let's start to create here our home screen. So the first case here, we can just create our composable. And we want to call this home screen. So we want to pass in here a simple parameter, which is going to help us to navigate. So we can just call this on navigate. So this is going to be a Lambda function, which is going to take up an int and return a unit. Okay, so here we want to pass in the ID whenever we navigate here, for example, from the home screen to the detail screen. Okay, so the first case here, we want to obtain the home view model. So basically, we can just use the view model. So if you don't have this method, uh, you must make sure that you have added the compose view model dependency inside your build.creator files. Okay, now we want to obtain the home state. We can just call here our home view model and we want to get the state. Okay, so we are going to surround everything inside the scaffold. So for this case, let's call here our scaffold. And inside here, we can just pass in a floating action button. Okay, so let's create here a floating action button. And inside the on click here, we want to execute the navigation here. So inside here, let's call here on navigate.invoke. And basically here we have to pass in the ID. So because whenever we click the floating action button, we are going to navigate to the detail screen to create a new item. So for this case, we want to pass in a default value, which is going to help us to understand whenever we are inside the detail screen that, hey, we want to create a new item and not update a, an existing item. So for this case, we are going to pass in negative one. Okay, and inside here now we can just pass in the icon. We can use the image vectors, so we can use icons. And here we want to call the add, which is going to add the items. And basically here we can just pass in null. Okay, so now we want to display the items inside a lazy column. So for this case, we can easily navigate inside here our scaffold object and create a lazy column. And inside here now we can just easily pass in our contact. Okay, so the first case here we want to have the display chips. So for this case here we can just create the item and basically create here our lazy row which is going to display their items inside a row here. Okay, now let's create a composable that is going to help us to display these chips. Okay, so as you can see here, we have the items, which is going to help us to create these chips here. So for this case here, we can navigate here below and create a new function. And we can easily call this category item. Okay, so inside here, the category items, we want to pass in several variables. So the first case here, we want to pass in the drawable res. And for a case here, we are just going to call this icon. Now let's navigate here below and create a new composable. So we can write here comp. And inside here, we're going to pass in several variables. So the first case here, we want to get the icons. So we're going to create here the drawable res. And we can just call this icon res. And it's going to be of type int. And also here we want to create a title. And we want to be able to pass in here the callback whenever we click our item. Okay, so right now here we have the on item click. Okay, so inside here we can easily create a card. And pass in here a modifier. Okay, so the first case here we want to pass in the padding and we are going to pass in here the top to be 8dp. Okay, so we want to be able to select this card so we can just pass in here the selectable uh, modifier and then we want to see if this is going to be selected or not. 
and if it's going to be selected then we are going to pass in here our selected state and then we want to pass in here the interaction source so we are going to use the mutable interaction source and also we want to show the indication that the user there is something is happening so we can just use here remember repo which is going to help us to remember this and the on click here basically we can just pass in here the on click and we want to invoke the on item clicked whenever we just pass in here so we can just invoke it here okay so this is just the first case here okay so another thing here we want to pass in here a border so in order to match that item there we can just pass in here the border and pass in here a border stroke and we want to pass in a width of 1dp and we want to check if it's going to be selected then we can just pass in a certain type of color so we want to check if this is going to be selected then we can just pass in here the color and if not then we can just pass in here the else if it's not selected then we can just use the material theme and we pass in here primary so if it's going to be selected then we are going to use here the primary color and we are going to tint it to just decrease the opacity by 50 percent and if not then we can just pass in here our material theme and this we want to pass in here the color to be surface not primary and we have to use this variable here shape dot large okay and we want to change the background color of a certain item which is going to be selected so if it's going to be selected then we have to change the background color of that particular chip which is going to be selected so let's pass in here selected we're going to pass in this to be also the scene and else if not the case here then we have to pass in a, another color so we can just pass in here and also we want to pass in here when we have the content color and we're going to use the own primary here Okay, so this is everything about our card here, which we want to change the colors whenever we are going to be changing using this state here. Okay, now let's add here the a row, which is going to help us to display all of those items in a particular way. So here we can pass in the horizontal arrangement. And we want to arrange it to center. okay we can just pass in here also a modifier and pass in here a modifier and give it a padding of 8 dp okay so here is our just uh, our item chip as you can see here we have the two items inside the row so we have an icon and also we have the title so now let's just create here our icon the first case here we can just write here icon and basically we can just pass in for example we, we are going to use the painter resource because we are going to be providing this so that's why we are using here a painter resource and then we can just pass in the painter resource id so we can just call here our icon res and for now on the content description here we can just pass in here to be null so as you can see here we have our item and now we can just force this to occupy a particular size so we want this to have a size of 24 dp and just call here modifier.size and give it a 24 dp okay now let's create here a spacer 
And we want here a spacer of 8 dp. Now let's add here a text. And basically here inside we can just pass in our title. And change the style here. And we want to use a header 6. So we can just use here material theme dot typography. And use header 6 for our case here. Okay, and use here a font weight of medium. So now our item here is complete. And basically we can just navigate here back inside our Resilo. So inside here basically now we can just pass in our items. Okay, now let's call here our category item and we have to pass in here the category res id so the first case here we can just call here category dot res id so we are going to have here our item and also the title so we can just call here category dot title and we want to see if it's going to be selected or not so for this case we can just check here our category if the category is going to be equal to a home state, so let's pass in here our home state dot category. So if this is going to be equal to true, then it's going to be a selected. So here basically now we can just inside our on click item, then we can just invoke our category change. So here we can just call here our home view model dot on category change. And basically now we can just pass in here the category, which is going to be the selected category, basically. And let's add here a spacer. And basically we can just pass in here a modifier. Okay, so now here we have written a lot of code. Let's just try and test it. We can just navigate here inside our main activity and come inside here and call our home. Our home screen for now and then on navigate here we're going just to implement it later so for now let's try to run this inside our application and then now let's just try to run it first so here we have our items launched inside our application and as you can see here we have a slight problem and we can easily fix it here by changing the colors so we can just navigate here inside our home and let's go back here inside our background color so instead of using here on surface we have to use the surface color so here we can just pass in the surface okay now let's try to rerun again and see the changes so now everything is looking good as you can see here we have our items whenever we select it then it's going to change the colors and as you can see we have everything working okay now let's continue to add other items inside here our home screen Okay, so now here we have our items. Then we have to add the items which is going to display all of those categories. So now let's pass in here the items. Then we're going to use our home state. And we want to obtain these items here. Okay, so inside here now we can create another composable that is going to help us to display here all of these categories. Okay, now let's just come below here and create a new composable. And we can just call this shopping items okay so the first case here we want to pass in the item and which is going to be of type items with a store and list and we want to check if this is going to be is checked and we want to have here the on item click and also we want to invoke the on check change. So we're going to pass in here the items. Okay, so inside here the on check change, we're going to pass in the selected item and whether or not it is selected. And we're going to just to return here a unit and the on item clicked. 
so whenever the item is going to be clicked so for example if we want to navigate and go to update our item then we're going to use this and this one is going to be used for the checked box okay okay so here is just going to be our items so we are going to have for example here a banana and this is just going to be included inside a card so now let's start to create here our card and inside here we want to pass in here a modifier then we want to fill the max width and we want to make this to be clickable and here we can just invoke the on item click okay and let's give it a padding of 8 dp all right so inside here we have the items which are just going to be arranged in inside the row and as you can see here they're just spaced in a between okay now let's create here our row And first, let's pass in here a modifier. And we want to fill the max width. Okay, also we want to pass in the horizontal arrangement. And we want to make them to space between. Okay, and here we want to pass in the vertical alignment. And we want to center them vertically okay so now here we have our item so we can create for example here our first category here which is just going to be arranged inside the column as you can see here we have the banana farmers and also we have the date so now let's create here a column and we can just pass in here a modifier and pass in a padding of a dp okay so the first case here we have the title text which is just going to be the title of that particular item so let's pass in here the text okay so we're going to use our item here that item name so let's change a style here And we can just use here header six and we want to make the font weight and just transform this to be a bold okay now let's pass in here a spacer and pass in here a spacer for dp okay now we want to pass in here for the store Okay, so we want to pass in here the store name, but I'm not getting here. So I think we forgot here inside our store to pass in the store name. Okay, so we have to create inside here our store data model class. So you can easily navigate here, for example, inside the store, which is just found inside our models. So basically here we can just change and add also here a store name. Which is just going to be of type of string. okay and now let's just navigate here back and inside here we can just pass in here the store name okay now let's pass in here a spacer for dp okay so we want to pass in here the date okay now let's pass in here the compositional local provider and we want to decrease the opacity so we can just use here the local content alpha and we want to use this provide keyword here and provide the content disabled for example here so we can just use the content alpha and then inside here now we can just pass in our text Okay, so now we want to format our date. So let's create here a simple method which is just going to help us to format our date. So let's create here a function and call it format date.
and this is going to receive a date and it's going to return us a string okay so for this case we can just use a simple date format and inside here we have to pass in our pattern so for our case here we can just use this pattern here okay so this is just the case here so we are going to use this pattern here to format the date which is just going to be in form of a date which is we are going to be storing inside our database and for this case we're going to format this and return this type of particular date here so basically here we can just call our format date and pass in our item Okay, now let's change the style. And we can use here the material theme dot typography. And we want to use this subtitle one. Okay, so we have finished to create here our first item. Now we can just focus on the second part. So as you can see here, we have the first part here, which is just going to display the the details here and also we have another detail which is just going to be beside here so let's create another column here and also here we are just going to pass in here the modifier and we want to pass in the modifier padding also to be a dp okay so the first case here we want to display the quantity so we can just pass in the text and this text here we can just write here for example qty and we can use this string template here and pass in here the qty which we want okay and let's style this a little bit so we can just pass in here our style And we are going to use a typography header 6. Okay, and let's make the font way to be bold. Now let's add a little spacer here of 4DP. Now let's create here a checkbox. And we're going to check if it's going to be is checked. And whenever we perform here the any changes let's put this first in a separate line and we can just call here on checked chained and we want to invoke it here okay so we have to pass in here two items so we can just pass in here the item dot item for the first case here and then also we have to pass in if it's going to be true or false whether it's checked or not so that is just the case okay so now let's just navigate inside here so inside our home state we can just easily call here now our shopping item okay so we're going to pass in here it and also if it's going to be checked so we can just pass in it dot item dot is checked Okay, now let's put this first on the separate line and whenever the unchecked change is going to be invoked then we can just easily change here we can use here our home view model and call here on item checked change then we have everything here and basically here this is just going to invoke the on navigate so whenever we click for example this shopping list item we can just call here on uh, the on navigate and we can invoke it here okay now we can just use it dot item dot id and basically pass it so that we can easily use it inside our detail screen 
okay so this is just how you can easily create our home screen now let's try to run again and see if everything is working perfectly now when we run our application we're just getting this error here so as you can see room cannot verify the data integrity so as we have changed our entities thus room is going to throw this exception here or unless we have to provide those database migrations so for now we are not going to implement these migrations so for a case we can just easily navigate back inside our application and also delete the caches so that we can easily start it or if you uninstall and install again your application then it's going to be running smoothly okay so when you navigate inside here your phone you can just easily delete this or you can just uninstall it and now let's just reinstall again our application here okay so now everything is working perfectly so we have no any problem so we don't see anything here because we have an empty state so now let's just focus here on adding this item and navigating for example to the detail screen so that we can just easily create the details okay so now let's just close everything here and we are going to navigate inside here our ui and details and create a new coding class or file and for case here we are just going to create our detail view model okay so this is just going to inherit from a view model okay now let's pass in here our constructor for the case so we want to provide here a private val so we are going to receive here for example the item id so whenever we navigate for example when we click a particular item and navigate to the detail screen we want to receive the item id so for this case here we can just pass in here the item id which is just going to be of type int and another thing here which we want to receive is the repository so we can just get our repository and we can just use here graph and create our repository okay so the first case here we want to create our data class which is going to hold us our state so we can just call this detail state okay so the first case which we want to store here is just the store list So for the first time, which is just going to be an empty list. The item which we are going to save is going to be of type string. And for the first time, it's just going to be an empty. And also the store. So we can just initialize here an empty date. Okay, and also the quantity. Okay, another thing here is a screen dialog. so we are going to have here is updating item so whenever we want to update an item then we are going to change this to be true so that we can easily access the update methods and functionalities and also here we can just get the category And basically you can just create here an empty category okay so here we have our state now we can just easily initialize it inside here okay now let's remit this to be a private set so we don't have to reinitialize this outside of our detail view model 
Okay, so we want to be able to tell if the user is not typing anything so that we can disable this button here. So we have to have a certain type of a state that is going to help us to understand this. So for example, here we can just easily create a variable which is just called is field not empty. So for example, here we can just call this val. And this is just going to be of type boolean. Okay, now we can just write here our gate function. And basically we can just check in the state which we are going to have. So we want to check if the items. And we can just use is not empty. And also we can just check in the store. So for example, here state.store. And also we can just check the quantity if it's not going to be empty. So basically we can just use this inside our UI in order to restrict a user whenever these items are going to be empty. And we're just using here get function so that we can easily uh, change whenever the state is going to change here. So this is just going to call again. So not to just to initialize this to false uh, throughout our application. So whenever I call this method here, it's going to check first this condition here and then return our function. Okay, so now also we want to pass in the methods which are going to modify the state. So for example, here the on item change. So let's create here on item change. And we can change the item equals to new value. Okay, now let's create everything for all. So let's press control C here and control V. Okay, now here we want to change the store. And instead of item here, we can just change the store. Okay, now the on quantity change here. And here we can just pass in a date. Okay, so here we have our methods which are going to modify our state. Okay, now also we want to be able to add and remove items, for example. So we want to be able to add the items. Now let's create here a function. Now let's just call this a private. want to be able to add the list of items which we have. So we can just use here our view model scope dot launch. And inside here we can just use our utils. And we're going to add everything here. So for example, here we want to insert so we can just use our repository. And we want to insert a list. Now let's create here our shopping list. Okay, so that was adding list items. So we have the list items inside our utils. So whenever you navigate here inside our utils, you can just see the, we have these categories which we are just going to be inserting them. For example, inside our database. Okay, so now we want to be adding, for example, the shopping item, the items which we are going to be creating. So we can just easily add here another uh, function. So let's create here function dot add shopping list item. And we can use our repository dot insert item. Okay, so inside here we can just create a new item. 
and we can just use the item name for example here okay so the list id which is just going to be the category which we are going to be selecting so we can just use here the category dot id and also the date here is just going to be state dot date okay now the quantity which is just going to be the state dot quantity so here we can just use the state dot store list okay now we can just find here the store name and we want to get the id and if not then we can just return here zero okay so basically here we are just filtering we want to get the store list id so we can just find the store name and we want basically to be returned with the store list id so that we can just easily store it inside here okay now here we want to check if it's checked and for the first case because we are just going to be adding a brand new item we're just going to make this to be false so we never want to update this to be checked or not then we are going to use the update items okay so here we have our adding of our shopping items okay now let's create here a function that is going to help us to update the shopping list item okay now we have to pass in here the id of which is just going to be the selected item so that we can easily update it so we can just use here our view model scope dot launch and basically here now we can just use our repository and we can just for example use the update or we can just use the insert item again repository dot insert item and we have to pass in here our item we can just pass in here the item name so we're just going to use again the state dot we can just copy this everything here and basically we can just pass in here the id so whenever we use here our id then the, it's going to find this same exit item and then it's just going to override the items with these particulars here okay so here we have updated our item now another thing which we want to do here is to be able to add a store so let's create here a function and call this add store and basically we can just call here view model scope dot launch and we can just call here our repository not insert store now let's create here our store so we can just pass in here our store name we can use state.store and we can just use here again our state.category.id as our list id foreign key here in order to save it okay now let's write here another function which is just going to help us to get the stores so get store for example okay now let's use here our view model scope dot launch and basically we can just call here our repository dot stores and we want to collect the latest and we can just modify here our state and we want to use state dot copy and let's save here our store list which is just going to be equal to it so here we are just going to fetch all of the stores which we are going to be saving them okay so that was just the methods which are going to help us to get our data okay now let's write here some other logics which are going to help us to for example whenever we initialize here our view model so that we can easily call them 
Okay. So the first case here, we want to init the variable. Okay. Now let's call here our add list items. Another thing which we want to do is to get the stores, which we are going to see them whenever we use them. Now, again, we want to update the state. So whenever the item ID is not going to be equal to negative one. So we want to fetch that particular item and update our state so that we can easily update our item. So for this case, we can just call here item ID. If it's not going to be equal to negative one, then we know we are just updating the item. So for this case, we can just call here our view model scope dot launch. And inside here, we can just call our repository dot get item with this store and list. And basically we want to pass in here the item ID so that we can just get this particular item and we want to call collect latest. Okay, so as you can see here, we're just calling this get item with filtered with list ID so that we can just pass in the item ID which we have here. And again, now we want to use this collect latest in order to filter it. Okay, now inside here, we can just call here our state and we can just call state.copy and we can just use it.item. Okay, so we are just going to use here the get item with the stone list so that we can just get a single item and not a list of items that are going to be filtered with this particular ID. So for our case, we want just to get a single item. So we're just going to use this get item with the store and list. And for this case here, now we can just pass in the item dot name. Store dot store name. Again, the date. So we can just use here it dot item dot date. So here we're just going to pre-populate all of those items. So the category. So we are just going to use here our utils. And we want to find this particular item. So we're just going to rename this to PC. So let's use c.id. If it's going to be equal to it dot shopping list dot id. And if it's not found, then we can just return here a default category item. Okay, so this method can just not find this particular ID. So we are just going to return the default one. Okay, now also the quantity. We can just change here the our quantity and pass in here it dot item dot qt. Okay, so now here we are just updating our item. Also, again, we can just create here another init function. And we can just tell the state. Okay, now we can just call here state.copy and pass in is updating equals to true. Okay, now we have to pass in this state to be up here. Okay, so we are just checking here if the state is not here. So we can just change this state to be is updating and otherwise not. Then we are just going to pass in is updating not so that we can just focus here on updating. Okay, so another thing, whenever we are just passing here these variables here by not passing because we are just passing here at runtime this item ID here. So we have to create a factory method. That is going to help us to construct this view model at runtime and pass with these particular dependencies. So this dependence here is just already provided, but this item ID here is not going to be provided at runtime. So for this case, we have to create here. So we can just navigate below here and create a, a, a detailed view model factory that is going to help us to construct this view model. So now let's create here a class and we can just call this, for example, detail view model factory. Okay, so we are going to receive here the ID. And this is going to inherit from the view model provider. Okay, so we have here a method which we have to override. So we can just press control O. 
and we have this method here which is just there on create here which is going to help us to return a particular uh, view model whenever we create or we call this view model factory here so we are just going to return here our detail view model and for case here we want to pass in now the item id to be this id which we are just going to be creating and we want to call this as t so that we can just uh, fix this and also we can just suppress this and cast uh, check here okay so whenever we create here our view model we are just not going to call this detail view model however we're just going to use this detail view model factory so that we can easily pass this at runtime and this is just going to help us to fix all of these uh, problems here okay so now here our view model is ready as you can see here we have completed everything now the first thing here we want to create is our detailed screen so for this case let's create a new coding class of file and we are just going to select this to be a file and we are just going to call this detail okay so the detail screen here we are just going to receive an id which is just going to be of type int so whenever for example we navigate here and we want to update an item then we're just going to pass in the id that's why we are passing here and if not we're just going to pass in negative one so for this case here we can just call for example this navigate up okay so the first case here we want to obtain is just our view model so we can just call here our view model okay now we want to pass in here a factory and not as previously so we're just going to pass in here our detail view model factory at runtime we're just passing here the id whenever we want to construct this and here now we have to provide the type and this is just going to be detail view model okay now let's create here our scaffold which is just going to help us to hold everything which we have okay now let's create here a new composable and we can just call this detail entry okay now i want to make also this to be private okay so the first case in here we want to pass in the modifier so we have a default modifier Okay, another thing here is just the on store change. Okay, another thing which we're just going to add here is just the on item change. And the on category change here. And here we want to pass in the category. And here is just the on dialog dismissed. Okay, another thing here is just the on save a store. So, for example, we want to save the store. Okay, another callback here is just to update the items. So, for example, here we want to update items. and lastly but not least here is just to navigate up whenever we finish up and call this navigate up okay so inside this column here we have to pass in for example a padding of 16 dp so we can just pass in here a modifier okay we want to have another state that is going to help us to enable this particular type whenever we click here for example we can easily just insert this data here so we can just create here our state and we can just call here by remember okay so the first case here which we want to do is to create the text fields which are going to help us to insert these particular items okay now let's create here the text field okay 
okay let's pass in here a label okay now we want to change the colors here so we can just call here our text field default Okay, so the next thing here we have created first this particular item here now we want to create this and this is just to we have a button here and also we have a text field so for this case here we can just create here a row okay now we want to check here if this particular item is going to be enabled, so if it's enabled, okay, so we are just checking here with this particular state here if it's going to be enabled, and if not, then we are just going to pass nothing here and nothing is going to be typed inside here. You can just pass in here a modifier. Okay, so similarly the colors, we are just going to copy this. And our label is going to be of type store. Okay, now let's pass in here the leading icon. And we can just call this keyboard arrow down. And we can just make this to be clickable. And we want to invoke this, so we want to call the state dot. This is screen dialog dismissed here. Okay, so we are just invoking here and we're going to be negating the state of the easy screen dialog dismissed here. So if it's true, then it's going to be false. And if it's false, then it's going to be true. So this is how we are just going to use this particular item here. Okay, so basically we want whenever we click this, then we are going to show this particular pop-up, which is going to help us whenever we select here, then the item is going to be added inside here. So how can we do this? Now we can just easily create here a pop-up. Now we can just navigate below this and create here a pop-up. And we can just call here on dismiss. And we can just negate here is the screen dialog dismissed okay now the next case here we can just create here our surface and for each particular list item here we want to create a text And the first case, we want to provide a padding of 8 dp. And the second thing, we want to make this to be clickable. Okay, so whenever we click this item here, we can just call here our on store item change. On store change, and we can just call dot invoke here. And we want to pass it dot store name. And the case here, we want to call here on dialog dismiss. And we can just call here our state. So we're just going to negate our state here. Okay, so this is just going to be our pop-up, which we are just going to be creating. 
Okay, now the next thing here is just create a text button, which is just going to help us to be creating a new item here. So as you can see, we have this button here. Okay. Okay, now we can just call here our text. And if this text is going to be is enabled, we can use that state there. If is enabled, then we can just call save. And else, we can just call here new. Okay, and here we can just call here our own service too. And invoke. And if this is just the case, then we want to update our state here. And we can just call our negation here is new enabled. And else again, we can just call here is new enabled. And we can just call it, we can negate this is new enabled for our case here. Okay, now the next case here which we want to create here is just this particular next row here. So as you can see here we have a row and inside this row we have another row that contains this date range here and also the quantity uh, text field here. And now let's pass in here our horizontal arrangement. Okay, now inside here let's create another row to create that first particular item which is just this date range here. And we want to center it vertically. Okay, now let's create here our first icon. And we want to use this, oh sorry. We want to use the date range. And we can just make this to be null here. Okay, now let's pass in here a spacer for dp. And we can just use here the text, uh, the date formatter. The date, and basically we can just transform that inside here. Okay, now again, let's create here a spacer of 4 dp. Okay, so another thing here is we want to create a date picker dialog. And in Jepa Compose, until now, we don't have a composable that is going to help us to make this that picker dialog so we can easily create it by ourselves by using the the xml way so for this case let's create here a new composable and this composable we are just going to call this that picker dialog okay now inside here we are just going to pass in the context which we want Okay, so the first case here, we are just going to initialize the calendar. And we can just call here calendar.getInstance. Okay, now we want to get the current math and the days. So we can just create here variables. So we can call here year, for example. And we can just call calendar.get. And we want to get day of month. It's going to return us a particular date. Now again here we can just call here our calendar dot time. And we can initialize this to this particular date. Which we are just going to create it here. Okay. Now another thing here we are just going to create a state. And we can just call this remember. And then it's just going to be a mutable state of an empty string for now okay now let's just declare here our date picker dialog and now we can just call here our date picker dialog and create by initializing here and pass in here the initial values so the first case here we can just pass in the context
okay so here we are not going to use this date picker here and also we are just passing here the for example m year which is just going to be of type int also okay so now here we can just pass in our calendar Okay, so now here we have our calendar. Now we can just call calendar.seed. And um, day of month, which are just the variables which we're going to receive inside this callback here. Then after that, we can just call here our on date selected. And we can just invoke it here. Now we can just call here our calendar.time so that we can just return the time which we have selected here. And date picker dialog. So we have created here our composable, which is just going to create us a date picker dialog, which is going to help us to pick up the date. So as you can see here, we have the variables which we are going to create our date and month. And also we have here our selected date. Okay, so we are just going not to use this. We can easily delete it. Okay, so for now here we have the M date picker dialog. So as you can see, we are just using here this callback here to get the date. And basically we can use this calendar here. And basically here we have to use the calendar. So now here we have our date picker dialog. Now let's just navigate inside here our And basically now we can just call here our date picker composable here. And then we have to pass in the context. And basically we can just call here our local context. Okay, now when we call here the on date selected, so we are going to receive here a date. Okay, so now we want to be able to invoke this. And basically to invoke this, we have to create here an icon or a button that is going to help us to uh, invoke this. So let's create here an icon button, for example. And here we pass in now. Okay, so inside here, Inside the on click, we can just call here the embed picker dialog. And basically, now we can just call dot show. Okay, so the next thing here is we have to create this text field where we're going to add in the quantity. So uh, below this row here, we can just collapse this. And now we have to create our text field. Okay, and here we can just call state.qty. And inside here, the on value change, we can just call the on, co on quantity change. And basically, let's make it to be keyboard number. Okay. Now let's pass in here a modifier. Okay, and on the part of colors here, we can just use this similar here. So let's just press Ctrl C. Okay, so now I think we have completed to create here our items. So we have everything here. Now the next thing here is to create this uh, scrollable items here where we can easily pick up these items here. Okay, so now what we can do here, let's just collapse this. Okay, now below this row here, we can just easily create a spacer.
okay now let's pass in here our items and basically we are just going to use here utils dot cat uh, dot category okay now let's call here our category which is just the category items and we created inside our home composables okay now we can just pass in here our category icon res we can just call here our category and now here we can just check the category if the category is going to be equal to state dot category then we know this is just going to be selected okay and inside here we can just call the own category change let's pass in a spacer of 14 dp okay so now we have finished to create this now let's just create this item here this button here which is going to add the item or update the particular item so for this case here now let's just navigate below this here now the first case here we can just create the button title is updating item then we can just call here update item now let's first pass in here a modifier okay so whenever we click here we want to be checking between two possible scenarios so if we are updating then we want to update the item and if not then we want to be uh, saving an item so for this case we can just use a when statement inside the on click here so we can just check the state And now after that whenever we click this button we want to navigate back to our screen so we can just call here navigate app dot invoke okay now we want to check this enabled status now we can just check the state if this is going to be particularly the state okay so we want to disable this button if these are going to be not uh, empty and if they are empty then we have to disable this button here okay now let's create here a preview composable so we can just write here brief okay now let's call here our detail entry okay now let's preview here our changes and see the changes which we have created okay so here is just our output now let's just come here inside our preview and show system ui and we want to see everything and we can just make it to be true here okay so as you can see here everything is looking good except here we have two op overlapping items here we can just navigate and this is just going to be inside this button here okay so it's going to be between these two rows here so we didn't add here a spacer we can just copy this spacer here press ctrl c press ctrl v here okay now everything is looking perfectly so here we can just easily scroll this whenever we just start an interactive mode okay so now let's hook up everything and make everything just uh, functional okay so now here we have finished to create everything now we can just navigate here inside and call our detail 
uh, detail entry inside our detail screen. Now the on that selected, we can just call here our view model. Okay, now inside here there on, for example, on server store, we want to save this store. So we can just call here our view model. And when we want to save the items, we can just call here our view model. Okay, so now here we have our detail screen. However, now we are just calling here our home screen directly inside here our main activity. So we have to create here our navigation logic so that we can easily navigate between these two screens uh, smoothly. So how can we do this now? Let's just create here a new coding class or file. We can just create here a new coding class. And we're just going to call this navigation. Okay, now we want to create here the routes which we are going to be uh, moving to and from. So let's create here an enum class. Okay, so inside here the parameter we can just pass in here the nav host controller. So make sure you have added the dependency for navigation so that you can have this nav host controller here. Okay, now we let's create here the navigation host. And the first case here we have to pass in the nav controller and then we can just pass in here the nav host controller. Okay, so another thing here we have to pass in the start destination. So the destination which we want to start. So for case here we are just going to use routes.home.name. This is just going to be the first where when our application is going to be launched. So we are going to navigate directly to the home screen first okay so for that case let's create here a composable and we'll, let's define here the route and this route we are going to use here routes dot home dot name so basically this is just going we're going to define here the composable that is going to be the home screen so let's pass in here the home screen and basically here we have the on navigate so whenever we want to navigate now we can easily just navigate again okay so we are going to have here the uh, a parameter here which is going to be an id so we can just rename it to be an id so whenever we want to navigate, for example, here to another route, so we can just call here our nav host controller and we want to call dot navigate. And basically we are going to navigate to a certain route. So for case here, let's define this route here. And for case we are going to define here a route that has a parameter which we have to pass it. So for example, the ID, whenever we click an item and navigate to the detail screen that we want to pass in the ID. So for this case, this is how we can easily pass in the routes. So you have to type as how I type here. Otherwise, you're just going to get an errors. Okay. And here we want to pass in the ID, which is just going to be equal to the ID, which we have passed here. Okay. Now for this case here, we have created our first composable. Now let's create the next composable, which is just going to be the composable of our detail screen. Now let's write here our route. Okay, now this here we have to also create by using the routes, which we have defined there. So we can just call here routes dot uh, detail. Okay, we have to pass in here the question mark to be this. And we are just going to pass in here the ID, which we have to replace it. So as you can see here, we are just using an optional argument here to be the ID. 
which we have to pass in here so sometimes we are not going to be creating or we are not going to be updating an item we are going to be creating a new item so for this case we don't have an id here to pass and for this case we have created this okay now we want to be able to obtain the arguments so we can just write here the arguments and basically let's write here a list of and this list of the nav arguments which we are going to receive for our case and for case here we are going to receive an id an argument which is just going to be an id and its type is going to be of type int so let's write here type and call it nav type int so this is just going to be an int type okay Now let's get the ID from these arguments. So for this case, we can just call here ID. So we are going to receive here the backstack entry. So we can just call it here dot arguments. And this can be nullable. So we want to get int. And basically this is just going to be an ID. And if there is nothing here, because we know that we don't have anything, we are creating a new item we want to return negative one so that we can just tell hey we are just creating a new item and not updating an item okay now we can just call here our detail screen and basically pass in here the id okay so the id here is just going to be this id and whenever we want to navigate back so we can just call here our nav host controller and call navigate up and this one is going to return us to the uh, uppermost composable inside our backstack entry. And for this case here, we have our, our navigation logic here, which is just really simple because we have only two composables. Okay, so the next thing here which we have to do is we have to navigate inside our, uh, our main activity here. And we have to change the logic here and call the navigation host here. Okay, so inside here, our class, we can just create a new composable. Now let's create here a composable. And we're just going to call this jet shopping app, for example. Okay, so one thing here. We can just create here directory so we want to provide here a default we can just call here remember nav controller and we don't have to be passing here so whenever we want to we can just navigate here inside our main activity and remove this directly here okay so now inside here our set content view now we can just call here our jet shopping okay so i think everything is going to be looking good now let's try to relaunch our application inside our phone and see the changes we have made so our application is launched again okay so inside here let's create a new item so for example let's call this banana And when we click here, we have our market. And also let's select a date here. So we are going to be doing this shopping tomorrow. And this is just going to be fruits. Now let's click add items here. And we are navigating back to our home screen here. And as you can see, we can just easily select this. fruits we can easily now as you can see we had added this banana in the category of fruits here okay so here we have our items and as you can see whenever we select here we can just change this category and filter them so when we select fruits we have here for example bananas and watermelon 
and whenever we select for example here electronics we have just this single item here and whenever we click this none here we have all of our items so this is how you create a simple shopping list application using jepa compose and room database inside android studio okay so one operation which is missing inside our application is now when we want to delete an item so we cannot delete an item so we want to create a swap to dismiss which is going to help us to dismiss an item whenever we want to we want to delete a particular item so how can we do this now let's navigate back inside here our home category and inside here we have our shopping list items so what we want to do here is to create a dismiss state so let's create here val and call this dismiss state The first thing here we want to pass in the confirm state change so whenever our state changes what do we want to do so we are going to have here a value equals to be dismissed to an end then we want to call our home view model okay now let's create here our swap to dismiss composable so you can just create anything so for my case i'm just going to create here a surface Another thing which we want to pass in here is just the dismiss content here. And we are going to pass in here the shopping items. So let's just press here control X and pass in here the dismissed content, which is just going to be these items here. okay now let's try to rerun again here application and see the changes everything is good let's try to dismiss here our watermelon and see and now as you can see our items are just deleted hey guys so this is how you create a simple shopping list application that is going to help you to understand jepa compose and room database and how to mix them together so if you find this video helpful and don't forget to provide a like and subscribe for more videos so bye bye for now see you in the next video